All right, folks, this is the next computer build on the channel. So uh, let's start with CPU. This is going to be the Intel Core i3-9100. Um, it's obviously a 9th gen chip. This one does not require um, a graphics card. It has integrated graphics built into it. And uh, so that helps as far as the price goes with this build. We're trying to keep the build under $300. And, uh, you know, there's some planning involved in this, uh, obviously looking at what motherboard you use and, um, making sure that certain things are good to go. But since this isn't an overclockable, uh, CPU, that's why we went with, uh, this gigabyte motherboard. And, uh, so this has some good features. One, uh, originally these, uh, were only supporting 8th gen. And with our BIOS updates, it will support 9th. One thing we'll prove in our video is whether um, this will boot up with the 9th gen uh, chip in or not. Uh, some of the motherboards will. This most likely will have at least a year old BIOS in it. Um, so it's questionable whether it will work. If not, I've got a i5-8400 on standby that I will put in there, update the BIOS, probably make another video about it. And... Uh, then move on from there. But other things about this motherboard, uh, four RAM slot, so it should support anywhere from uh, 64 to maybe even 128. I believe ninth gen chips are supposed to uh, be able to handle up to 128 gigs of RAM DDR4. So we have uh, three uh, fan headers and uh, there'll be one CPU fan in here, an M2 slot, Gen 3 by 4 so that is good uh, because we uh, we're going to use that for our operating system, and uh, there's six out of three point uh, ones on here. Uh, excuse me, six USB three point ones, six out of threes, and uh, six USB two point oh. So uh, pretty good. I forgot to mention this is micro ATX. We're putting this in a, a mini tower. Uh, so an ATX would not uh, uh, would not fit in it, and uh, it does have one slot there for a PCI Express 3.0 by 16 uh, video card. If we were to upgrade, uh, if we were to upgrade, we're probably going to need a, a bigger power supply than what I had selected. But we'll get to that in a second. So um, for RAM. We're, like I said, we're trying to keep this under $300. Uh, Patriot Viper 4 gigabyte DDR4 RAM, uh, $20. I was able to get that for. Another item that cost $20 was the um, Adida XPG SX 6000 Lite. Uh, this had, you know, decent performance. Nothing super spectacular about it, but it was $20. So uh, that is good. And our operating system will be on this. Uh, and we'll allow, um, we will have room for expansion to add uh, one terabyte. Uh, but like I said, trying to keep this under 300. And actually, I was trying to get it close to uh, 250. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to make it. I did get, uh, I didn't mention this, I did get this motherboard for $55. So that was a pretty good deal. Everything's in it. All right, power supply. Um, EVGA 400 watt. Uh, this one, you know, this is kind of on the borderline. Like, it's really good for this build, but if you're to upgrade to a serious video card, it will have to be replaced. But in this case, you know, like I said, we're trying to keep it uh, the price down. So, is what it is. Uh, 24 pin connector to the motherboard. Various uh, SATA powers, MOLEDs, and one of the reasons this was selected over um, one of the other motherboards that I had, um, or excuse me, one of the other power supplies, this guy uh, does have the ability to support a graphics card. Um, you would want, uh, obviously, to get a very low wattage one. Uh, and then the other issue is the motherboard requires um, two of the four pins uh, for CPU power. So... I would have used uh, an even cheaper a Pivia um, power supply, but uh, it only has the one four pin, so that was a 
an issue. Um, the only benefit, other benefit to the other power supply would have been that it uh, could have handled a better graphics card later. So, um, but yeah, so that's that's what we have for uh, power. Um, not uh, not the best power, but uh, that that cost me uh, twenty nine ninety nine, I believe. So uh, in the case, this case I actually surprisingly picked up for um, twenty one ninety nine shipped. So uh, if we add all that up, let me pause a second so I can add it up. All right, so I just found some scratch paper here. So 20, 20, 130, 30, 22, 55, 277. So hopefully I didn't forget any components in this uh, computer, but that is uh, as cheap as uh, I was able to get it for a 9th gen build um, without a graphics card. So if I went with the i3-9100F, I'd have to get a graphics card and uh be hard to find one for uh thirty dollars or less to to beat this we do have a uh another i3 9100f here but uh yeah so i think that build would have come in at exactly 300 where we are at uh two did i say 279 277 so that's pretty good all right one thing we didn't talk about was the case a uh, very basic case this is a rosewill um I'll put the model number down below, if I remember, but uh, super cheap. Got it off eBay through Newegg. Uh, sometimes they run really good deals. Uh, the front has USB 2.0, so you've got uh, one of these is probably a microphone, the other is headphone, reset button, power. On the side is your USB 3.0. There's only one of those, which uh, kind of sucks, to be honest with you, but uh, hey, it is what it is. All right. The, uh, the motherboard will have a lot of other stuff on it. So first thing we're going to do is uh, I've already taken the side panels off to uh, save us time. And uh, this case has a uh, removable uh, structural thing here. So on this structure, most likely you can uh, bolt in hard drives if necessary. Um, up top. Obviously, we can put a uh, CD or DVD player in there, and uh, or you know even uh, one of those things that will allow you to add more um, 3.1s because the motherboard will support a uh, a module that would allow you to put more in there. So we have our um, heat shield. All right, got a couple of SATAs. We uh, actually won't even need those in this build. Then we have our motherboard. So normally, you know, if it was winter time, I would not be uh, touching this stuff like I'm doing. But uh, there's not a lot of uh, static electrics around here, so we're... Uh, I don't know if we're going to say we're being stupid, but um, careless maybe? Um, all right, so there's this guy. I'm going to set that aside for now. And first thing I'm going to do is orient my heat shield. And this is always a serious pain in the ass getting these things in here. Why they cannot uh, come up with a better way of doing this, I do not know. So, uh, looking at our motherboard, you can see the way our motherboard's oriented that we need to line these up like that, just in case there's any questions on how does that fit in there. And I'm actually going to pause this video because I will probably spend five minutes trying to get this thing to fit in here right. Um, that's the way these go. So, and plus, I need to get the get the camera mount out of the way to do this. All right, so we got that in there. Um, what a pain in the ass as usual. I actually cut myself on it. Um, so you got, do need to be careful, folks. So I'm not, I'm already uh, not happy with, uh, with the case from that aspect. But uh, it'll work. 
All right, so now um, we um, do not have any of our uh, hardware in here. And surprisingly, I don't even see the bag for the hardware. All right, so I found a bag of hardware. Um, I'm not sure if this was the exact the exact one, but I'm going to go ahead and put uh, these guys in um, to the existing holes because this needs a, uh, I guess what we'll call a spacer. Um, so I'm going to put these, I have five of them and, uh, it looks like looking at the motherboard, I need exactly five. So, um, no, I'm sorry. We need six of them. Um, so we're going to have to find another one somewhere. Let me pause this. All right. So we've got our, uh, spacers in and, uh, we're going to go ahead and put our motherboard in in a second. All right, so six spacers. we got one, two, three, four, five, and six in there. All right, so now we have something for our motherboard to sit on and hopefully line up with our um, heat shield. And so... Voila, it actually uh, is looking pretty good. So it am always amazes me that they can design um, as good as they are, but yet they have the shittiest, um, excuse my language, crappiest um, ways of connecting these things. You would think they would come up with some simpler system. So... I'm going to uh, line up the holes and then screw all these in. And I'm going to pause it because we're just wasting, uh, basically wasting. Uh... All right, so one down, five to go. Um, you know, I was I was complaining there. Um, I had the uh, first I had the wrong bag of screws. And uh, something you got to be careful of. Um, these different manufacturers, it would appear that they use um, different screws to go with the spacers. So um, I was wondering why I was having such difficulty. But now we have uh, opened up another Rosewill case and grabbed the hardware out of it. And it is all smooth sailing now. So a lot of times I just put the uh, the motherboards in, don't actually secure them all the way, um, just to make sure it works. Because uh, obviously putting this thing in um, is a bit of a hassle. Um, but taking it out is, you know, not as big a hassle, but still a hassle if it's not going to work right. So, um, but for this, we are going to just go ahead and secure it and count on it actually working. Um, a lot of things to do still, but, uh, we will get there. So, uh, a lot of things we could do right now. Um, I like to actually knock out the things I hate to do first, uh, cause then it's just smooth sailing after that. But, uh, you know, on your, uh, the front panel, so, uh, basically our power button, our reset, um, hard drive light, things like that. They will connect in here. And uh, I got to tell you, the, the gigabyte instructions really are just terrible for this. I'm amazed anybody ever uh, successfully uh, completes these builds. So I always refer to uh, the good old MSI. Um, they have this really nice uh, diagram here. And uh, this helps, you know, quite a bit. Um, you can see from it uh, easily how you're going to connect these. So we're going to we're going to do that uh, next, and uh, we'll get that going.
So your other option, if you can actually uh, see it, is to use something like this uh, magnifying glass where on your motherboard it actually shows you and uh, I think we've got we've got a bad angle here um, it's really hard to see what's on the uh, cell phone screen all right let's try this going this way I really want you to see uh, that it, it is labeled um, it's very hard to see maybe you can see that on the screen but uh, we'll use this device uh, I'm gonna pause the video get the camera out of the way but uh, the motherboard is marked uh, how to put these in but the print is so small and if you don't do it before you put the motherboard in uh, good luck reading it so one little trick I use um, maybe it's not a trick but you see on uh, the power LED that this one splits got uh, positive negative um, and if you look at the motherboard it tells you which one's positive negative it will have the print facing out um, so you'll want to line up all your other uh, cables in that same direction and that'll help you with figuring out which sides plus minus all right so those are in and uh, like I said, they're a little bit of a pain in the butt um, to get in there. So that's hence why we do those uh, as one of the first things. First, these wires are going to get in the way. Uh, but now I think we'll put the, uh, the CPU in. All right. So uh, we have our CPU. And uh, what you need to look for is a little triangle to orient this. Uh, when you put it in there but uh, let's go ahead and pop this out now um, you can take this plastic cover off now or uh, it should pop off on its own uh, when I put this in uh, we will see so it's seated in there good and this is somewhere you have to be real careful about uh, your CPU because uh, you can screw it up so it just popped out on its own um, so it's in there and uh, you can even read on there install processor first then remove and keep the cover uh, well place this cover while removing processor returning motherboard okay so some people you know say oh keep the take the cover off some uh, let the processor pop it out and uh, things work either way all right so CPU fan here's our CPU fan so we have a CPU fan I gotta get some uh, now the CPU fan is brand new, so it actually has uh, um, the thermal paste on it, so we don't have to uh, do that part. So over here is our uh, where our CPU fan is going to connect. So I'm just going to orient it so that it goes out that way. Um, and like I was saying about the thermal paste, if uh, if you did um, if you were reusing a CPU or uh, bought a used one um, and your fan doesn't have CPU paste on already you would need something like this okay a bottle of thermal paste um, that happens to be a super cheap one whether it's you know whether you should use a more high-end one um, probably should if you are um, planning on overclocking you definitely want to and uh, I'm just kind of jiggling this around to make sure it's in there. You wanna you wanna hear that snap? Um, so we'll go around and double check every one of these because only when it's sitting all the way down is it uh, is it safe. Uh, to power this thing up 
because you're not gonna if you don't get uh, full contact um, you're not dissipate, dissipating the heat so we have an issue with one of these I might have an issue with more than one, yeah. Alright, I'm not super happy with that, but it is pretty much in there, so. Now we're going to uh, attach our CPU fan. So that's done. I'm going to go ahead, uh, at this point, put the RAM in. Um, some of these motherboards, it matters if you only have one uh, RAM in here. So, from experience, it tells me this. This slot here is uh, going to be the one. I want to make sure. Another thing, I'm amazed they don't make these symmetrical. Um, so we'll just apply some pressure there, and that's locked in. Okay. So, lots more to do here, folks. Let's. Uh, so we have USB 3.0. Let me go ahead and uh, locate where that goes. Okay, so um, we've got this spot over here. And we're definitely going to do some cable management after we uh, ensure this works. So a little slot there, and that lines up with uh, our protrusion. There's a little protrusion. There's a little slot on the end. That's going to go in there. Okay. So our case is uh, just about hooked up, and then uh, we've got regular USB. Regular USB is over here. Uh, there's a missing pin there, or excuse me, a missing slot for a pin. And on the motherboard, there's a missing slot. So we want to line those up. Be careful not to bust them off. And that's in. Okay. So all these guys are going to have to get tied off to the case somehow. Um, which, with this removable thing, that's going to be annoying. But, uh, alright. So the uh, the audio one is uh, down here at the end. And once again, there's a missing, um, missing hole here. It's the second one in. Um, on your motherboard, it's... Uh, Second one in on the outside, and boom, that's in. Okay, so um, we're going to put the power supply. So I'm going to uh, put the power supply in. I'm not actually going to bolt it in until I make sure this whole thing works. Um, we've got all these cables, lots of cables to mess with and uh, secure. So this is a bit of a tight fit, folks. I will tell you. Just barely get it in here. Or can I? Okay, there we go. So it's pretty much seated where it would go. Holes uh, line up okay. Maybe I'll, uh, to be safe, we'll put in uh, we'll put in one screw to hold it in place. All right, so we put one screw in up at the top out of the four. Now let's uh, let's see. Got a lot of cables that we're going to tie down because we don't need them. Um, 
we're not going to have a hard drive in here. We're going to have a solid state drive. And uh, so on your 24-pin uh, connector, you've got that attachment point that's got to uh, connect to the outside. And uh, this one is split for uh, 20 or 24-pin. So there's that guy. That's in. All right. So really... It's almost a shame that, um, so we have all these for future upgrade. We're not going to need any of these guys, but we do need our um, two four pins uh, for the, uh, the CPU. And, you know, a lot of times they'll be, they'll be labeled, but uh, what a reason, the cheaper, the cheaper your... Um, The cheaper your power supply is, the less likely they are to be labeled. So I gotta make sure I'm putting these in the right direction. And I think they're in the right direction. So we're having a little fun getting them in. Um, wow, that does not want to go in there. All right, so uh, we got them in there, and uh, actually it looks a little ugly the way it's in there, but it is in. So, uh, what else we got, folks? We have uh, we got our fans, um, which, to be honest with you, we could do these uh, after the fact, after we verify that this processor is even going to uh, work. But uh, we'll go ahead and put it in now. So we'll have to tie this off. We're shorting the cable. Um, and then we've got one more. I think we've got another CPU fan in the front. No, this case only has one, one, excuse me, one case fan. Um, I thought we actually had two, two case fans, but we've only got one. So we're... Uh, we're ready for the moment of truth, folks, unless we forgot one thing, which we sometimes do. we got to put our M2 in. need an operating system. And, Well, I did a really bad job of putting my uh, heat sink on this thing, but oh well. All right, so we'll put that in there. It uh, was about 30 to 45 degree angle. And we uh, should have taken the screw out first. So if you're doing this at home, realize... Even people have done plenty of these things. Screw up. And now we're going to have to pull this out so we can get to the screw that I dropped. Okay, let's try that again. Alright. Putting in solid state drive M2. This is added a XPG SX6000 light. And, uh, this is one of my least favorite things to do. Let me switch over to a different screwdriver. So it's kind of a good idea to have a magnetic screwdriver. Um, I misplaced mine, so we um, continue to struggle this way. All right, so that's in. All right, now uh, we're gonna fire this up and see if it'll actually work. Otherwise, we're gonna have to pull the CPU out um, and put an H in. 
All right, so before we uh, fire this up and hopefully see it on the screen, a um, couple things to note for basically a checklist. One would be that uh, we have RAM installed. Uh, obviously, um, if you're familiar with computer builds, you will get a black screen if you do not have um, RAM in there. Uh, the operating system does not really matter to boot to BIOS, uh, so that was actually kind of a waste. And I think that one's already got an operating system on there. So uh, one thing we might check if this doesn't boot up is pulling that out, make sure there's no conflicts with uh, drivers or anything. We have everything powered up, um, so that part is good. We have our HDMI cable plugged in, so we definitely want that. Um, we're using a uh, TV here, but uh, you want to make sure it's set to the HDMI that you're using. And uh, that should be uh, about it, folks. Um, so let's go ahead and hit the power button see if we get any, if we get anything. So it did power up, um, but we do have a cable. Um, there you go. So another uh, thing for your checklist, make sure you don't have cables touching the fan. And this thing's going to keep... Oh, wow, look. So we... I don't know if you saw it. i got to move this bright light out of the way. We did... Uh, we did get um, a uh, direct boot. So that is good. Um, so either this has a newer BIOS in it, um, or... We, uh, we lucked out. So that, uh, that completes this build, folks. Um, it's good to go. Except for uh, installing... I just forget details. We will need these, uh, this installed on it. Um, 